Hello everyone and welcome back to our 30 day biology study challenge. Today is day 14 and we're going to be talking about meiosis and reproduction. So let's get started. We're going to be doing a brief content review and then doing some practice questions. And I invite you to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the other days of our 30 day study challenge. So you might remember from yesterday's video or another biology class that the phases of mitosis can be remembered as PMAT or prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And with meiosis, you might have heard that we go through PMAT twice, which is true, but we are going to add in some additional information today as we're talking about our review. Now, one of the main differences between meiosis and mitosis is the end goal. Mitosis's goal is to create two identical daughter cells. Meiosis, the end product, is four haploid daughter cells. And haploid means it has half the genetic information of the parent cell. Parent cell starts out as diploid, and then each of those daughter cells have half of the original information. This is useful for creating gametes or sex cells so that they can combine in fertilization to then create new diploid cells. One way I like to remember the difference so I don't get mixed up is thinking about mitosis is useful for growth and development and repair in larger multicellular organisms. So if I got a bump or a scratch on my toe, I would go through mitosis. In order to fix that, my cells would divide and create exact copies. But to generate me, I had to come from an egg cell and a sperm cell, and each of those was generated through meiosis. So me, meiosis, my toe, mitosis. All right, so here are all the stages of mitosis together. We have prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one and cytokinesis, and then we do it all again, prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two, and cytokinesis. So let's talk about what happens in each of these at a little bit closer level. So in meiosis one, we have prophase one first, and our chromosomes condense and become visible just like they do in prophase of mitosis. Our homologous chromosomes are going to pair up and we're going to have a process called crossing over where we have an exchange of genetic information between homologous chromosomes. This is really key in increasing genetic variation in organisms, but we have chromos chromosome from one parent, chromosome from the other parent, and they're lining up together and, and they're exchanging genetic information through a synapsis. And after this crossing over occurs, we have a pretty unique combination of genes from both parents. And this is why no two siblings, unless they're monozygotic or identical twins, are going to have the exact same DNA. In metaphase one, we're going to have our homologous chromosome pairs lining up at the cellular equator. And then instead of separating the sister chromatids, in anaphase one of meiosis, we have homologous chromosomes separated by those spindle fibers. And so at the end, we end up having full duplicated chromosomes still at the end of telophase one. Then our cell splits, then it's time to do it all again. Remember, at this point, sister chromatids are still attached. We have to separate them in the next part of meiosis. So in meiosis two, we have two rows here because we have two cells already. And remember, we're gonna end up with four cells. So we have to undergo this division again. In prophase two, our chromosomes will prepare again for this division, condensing if necessary. Our spindle fibers are gonna form. And then in metaphase two, we have our chromosomes lining up at the cell's equator. Notice that this part of meiosis looks a lot like mitosis. This is close. This part is more closely aligned to what we see in mitosis. So we have those chromosomes lining up just in one row this time on the cellular equator. And then in anaphase two, sister chromatids are being pulled apart to opposite ends of the cell. And then in telophase two, we have our genetic information fully separated. A nuclear envelope starts to form again. And then we're gonna have cytokinesis when that actual split occurs, resulting in four daughter cells with half the genetic information of the original parent and different combinations of those genes as well. And here's the full process again, but I invite you to look in your textbook or any other diagrams your teachers provided to get a closer picture. Species have to be able to reproduce in order to pass on their traits and their genes and to survive. Some organisms reproduce asexually and virtually all of their genes come from the same parent and so they're copies of the parent organism. Other organisms reproduce sexually and have half of the genetic information come from two different parents. So one half comes from one parent and one half of the genetic information comes from another parent. And those two haploid cells are combined. Remember, in order to get those haploid cells or gametes or sex cells for sexual reproduction, we have to go through meiosis first. The process of meiosis results in half the genetic information in the daughter cells. And in humans, this happens during the production of eggs 
or sperm. We can get lots of genetic variation through meiosis, through independent assortment of chromosomes, crossing over of chromosomes during prophase one of meiosis, and then of course the random fertilization of one egg cell with any one sperm cell. Remember, mutation is an important source of genetic variation, but these three reasons on this slide are very, very important as well. Process of meiosis imp is important in sexual reproduction because it provides genetic variation of offspring, and genetic diversity is important for the survival of a species. So in order to get the, that egg and that sperm, we have to go through the process of meiosis first. Then those two can undergo fertilization to produce a zygote, which is a fertilized egg cell and now a diploid cell. So let's put this all together. In humans, both a biological male and a biological female will need to undergo meiosis in order to produce eggs and sperm. Then one egg cell and one sperm cell will combine in fertilization. After that, that fertilized egg will divide and make copies of itself through mitosis as the embryo starts to grow. Mitosis will continue, continue until the cells start to differentiate and become all the different important parts of the growing embryo. Remember, differentiation is how we get so many different types of cells from the same DNA. Even though we have the same DNA in every single one of our cells, different parts of that DNA are turned on or off in order to produce the proteins to make the differences in all of our cells. Human reproduction and development are influenced by a lot of different factors, including hormones, the environment, and gene expression. In both males and females, our reproductive cycle is regulated by the cycling of different hormones throughout the body, including testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone. The cycling of hormones during the female menstrual cycle, as shown here, is going to involve a series of natural changes in hormone levels in order to produce the physiological effects in the uterus and the ovaries that are going to make pregnancy possible. Let's take a look at our gonads, or our sex organs, in human males and females. We have gametes, or our egg cells produced in the ovaries, and then those eggs will leave through the fallopian tube, seen here. Once a fertilized egg implants in the lining of the uterus, the uterus is going to provide an environment that's going to support the development of the embryo and the fetus. The placenta, which is connected to the developing embryo through the umbilical cord, is going to provide essential nutrients and the materials for the developing fetus. In males, the sperm are produced in the testes, as seen here, and both sperm and urine are going to pass through the urethra in the male reproductive system. During embryonic growth in human pregnancy, the development of important essential organs occurs early during the developmental stages. Here again we see another impact of environment on genes because if the mother is exposing herself or the fetus to negative environmental conditions like alcohol or tobacco smoke, that could have a very detrimental effect on the growing embryo. That's why it's important to avoid the use of alcohol, drugs, and tobacco during pregnancy. Guys, yeah, so we've studied mitosis and meiosis. Now we're going to focus Focus on comparing the two processes together. Now I know they may get a little confusing, they even sound the same, but we're going to review their differences and similarities one more time. Alright, so for starters, meiosis of course we are making sex cells like our sperm and our egg in humans. For mitosis we're just making regular old body cells, we call these somatic cells. Now these cells will all have the exact same DNA, whereas these cells are going to have slightly different genetic information and different amounts. But let's get to the nitty gritty. So remember the process of meiosis is a little bit more complicated than the process of mitosis. If we started out with the same genetic information, so if this pretend organism we're looking at had two chromosomes, if it goes through mitosis, remember it goes through prophase, the chromosomes condense, it's going to line up in the middle with metaphase, in anaphase those sister chromatids are pulled apart, and then in telophase we're going to have the um, chromosomes um, decondensing and we'll start out um, we'll start doing the process of cell separation, the new nuclear membranes are forming, um, and we're almost ready for cytokinesis, and we're going to have two identical daughter cells that look just like the parents. You can see down here, they're the exact same as what we started with. In meiosis, however, if we're starting with a parent cell that looks like this, we're going to end up with a daughter cell with half the genetic information that will be genetically different from the parent cell. We're going to go through PMAT again, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, but um, we'll do it twice. Now remember, before both these things can start, how do we get from here to here and here to here? Remember, the DNA is replicating in interphase during that S phase. So the DNA is going to copy itself over to make these beautiful butterfly looking chromosomes so that it can later on separate. That's how we don't lose any DNA in the process. If it, the DNA didn't replicate it, we would um, be like no DNA at all by the time the process was done a couple times. All right, so let's get to the actual Venn diagram. You guys know you love Venn diagrams. All right, so we're gonna fill this in. You can fill it along in along with me. Um, let's look at the both section first. Now these are the things that are similar between both of the different types of cell division. Ha, found my marker. So in um, both mitosis and meiosis, we are starting with one 
parent cell. The DNA is going to be copied in interphase. And PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, um, are, is going to be the process that both of these go through. Okay, start with mitosis. Think mitosis, my toe, your toe, is part of your body. So it's going to make your body cells or regular somatic cells. Somatic is another term for this. Our results are going to be the same amount or the same quantity of DNA. Um, so we'll call this diploid or 2N. Um, 2N is a full set of DNA or diploid is a full set of regular DNA. Um, this will result in two daughter cells. Hopefully you can read it. And again, we're going from a parent cell with 2N and we're resulting in daughter cells with 2N. So we're going from 2N to 2N, diploid to diploid. And this, of course, is going to happen in our body cells. So I think I said that already. Okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, makes in meiosis, we are talking about the process that will make sex cells. Now, um, this is going to happen in our gonads or our sex organs, so it happens in specialized tissue. Our result is that we're going to have um, half the DNA as we started with, or we'll call it haploid or N. Um, we will result with four daughter cells from this process. So we're going from 2N to N. Remember, that's half the original amount of DNA. And this, of course, is going to happen in what specialized cells we call germ cells. And generally, these are located in the gonads of us humans. And the gonads are our sex organs like our ovaries and our testes. All right, let's do some practice together. All right, starting off a little tricky here. The diploid number of chromosomes in the cell of a horse is 64. Which row of the table below describes the correct number of chromosomes in a cell after each of these cellular processes? So we have after G2, after meiosis, and after fertilization. Remember, a diploid cell, a normal body cell, has 64. All right, I want you to think about it. Remember, you can pause me or mute me and go through these at your own pace. I'm gonna give you a minute to think or pause, and then we'll give away the answer. Correct answer is row two. All right, so our normal diploid cell is gonna have 64 chromosomes. Now remember, before we go through mitosis, before we go through meiosis, we have to duplicate those chromosomes. So we do that during S phase of the cell cycle, but a duplicated chromosome still counts as one chromosome. This is where students can get pretty confused. So those duplicated chromosomes that kind of look like those butterflies or X's have identical sister chromatids on each side still counts as one chromosome each. So even in our duplicated chromosome cells, we have 64. Then we go through meiosis and we get a result of after meiosis, each cell having half the genetic information as the parent, 32 here. Then after it combines with another haploid cell in fertilization, we get 64, we have returned to the diploid cell number. All right, that was definitely a harder one to start out with. I think they're gonna be a little bit easier. When does crossing over occur? Think about it. Crossing over occurs during prophase one of meiosis. Now remember, this is when our homologous chromosomes are going to get together and exchange genetic information, so we end up with different combinations of genes from both parents. Why is meiosis important for sexual reproduction? It allows the zygote formed from fertilization to have triple the chromosome number of the organism. B, it allows the gametes to have twice the original number of chromosomes of the organism. C, it allows gametes to have half the original number of chromosomes of the organism. Or D, it allows the zygote formed from fertilization to have half the original number of chromosomes of the organism. Think about it. C. It allows gametes to have half the original number of chromosomes of the organism. Remember, gametes are sex cells and we need them to have half so that they can combine in fertilization to create the full diploid cells that will later undergo mitosis. All right, which statement best describes the term crossing over? A, an exchange of information between two homologous chromosomes. B, a molecular interaction between two sister chromatids. C, a molecular interaction between two non-sister chromatids, or D, a separation of two sister chromatids. Think about it. Correct answer is A, an exchange of information between two homologous chromosomes. Remember, this happens during prophase one of meiosis and sections of DNA are exchanged between paired homologous chromosomes, not between identical sister chromatids. 
because they're the same. It wouldn't matter if we exchanged their information. All right, last one for today. Which of the following is not a difference between mitosis and meiosis? A, meiosis involves two divisions. Meiosis only involves one division. B, meiosis occurs in ovaries and testes. Mitosis occurs in cells all over the body. C, mitosis only occurs in plant cells. Meiosis occurs in animal cells. Or D, mitosis produces diploid cells. Meiosis produces haploid cells. Think about it. Correct answer is C. This is not true. <laughs> mitosis does not only occur in plant cells and meiosis does not only occur in animal cells. All the other things though in this list are true differences between mitosis and meiosis. All right, tomorrow we're at the halfway point. We're gonna talk about Mendelian genetics and our 30 day study challenge. Be sure you have subscribed so you don't miss out on any days of our study challenge. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.